Ah, I said the word of God. The word is able to catapult you from where you are to where you ought to be. The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word that cannot put mountains from your path. And the word that can elevate you and put your enemies to shame and grant you the victory. Grace Assembly, stand to your feet to receive the vessel prepared from God for this hour. None other than a regional pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God. A lawyer par excellence, a senior advocate of Nigeria, my very own brother and my brother-in-law with his wife, Pastor Femi Atoebi and Pastor Mrs. Debola Atoebi. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's always correcting me that he's not a visiting pastor. He's one of the pastors of Grace Assembly. <laughs> thank, thank you so very much. Good morning, everyone. A Merry Christmas in advance and a happy and a prosperous a healthy new year if you're going to be here alive and well after the first of January can you shout hallelujah <laughs> amen I I'm very very happy to be back home I know it's been a while I have said to Pastor, I wonder why he introduces me because you don't introduce a pastor to his members, do you? Yes. Just welcome, just welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. I should never fail to acknowledge and to appreciate the senior pastor in the house, my dear friend, a bosom friend. You know, there are friends and there are friends people you could speak to about things that agitate your mind without holding anything back and you know that you're safe. Amen? Amen. Pastor Femi Paul and Pastor Evelyn Paul, can I say thank you so much for being our friends. We appreciate and the children and we bless God for the friendship. Of course, my girlfriend is with me this morning. Can you make my wife feel welcome, Pastor Adebola Atoyebi? <clears throat> it's quite rare, I'm sure you know, for, for, for us to be together on Sunday morning because I'm doing one thing and it's covering up for me also in another church. But because it's her brother's church, she said she'll be coming with me. <laughs> I believe she has a meeting with some women leaders. She was supposed to have that this morning, but she shifted it to 2 o'clock just so she could be here. I love you, Sira. Amen. Of course, my friends who always make life easy for me, my protocol team, can you just wave to them because time is fast, friend? God bless you. Amen. Genesis chapter 20 or chapter 49 um, please don't sit down if you don't mind how many of you are doers of the word I know we're all hearers but how many of us are doers of the word let me see your hand how many of you remember what I preached on when last I was here how many of you remember that okay now how many of you remember what I preached on when, when last I was here Sorry? How to be a blessing to a pastor. You forgot. But I haven't forgotten. How many of you remember to call pastor once in a while, send him a text? How many of you encourage pastor and his wife? Let me see your hands. You see, only a few of you. So you're not doing the word. 
you got to pray for this couple, you got to call them. Just say some good things to them. We don't get many of those things and they encourage us to go a long way. So from today, please don't forget. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 14. I'm going to read verses 1 to 10. Um, I will probably refer to the other text as we go on and I'll probably skip to verse 22 and then to verse 28. Genesis 49 verses 1 to 10. Are you there? <clears throat> Excuse me, are you there? And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Are you there? Good. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto his trial, your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity. And the excellency of power, unstable as water, thou shalt not, shall not excel. Now this is a father to a son about to die. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch, the father said. Simeon and Levi, our brethren, instruments of cruelty, are in their habitations. O oh, my soul, Come thou not into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be thou not united, for in thy anger they slew a man, and in their, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Judah, Thou art he whom the brethren shall praise. The hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall be the gathering of the people be. Jump to verse 42, the same chapter, Genesis 49. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the almighty who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above. He's beginning to talk about me now. Blessings of the deep that lieth under blessings of the breast and the womb. The blessings of the fathers have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf, as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil. The last verse we are reading, verse 28. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is that the Father speak unto them and bless them. Everyone according to the blessing, he blessed them. Father, add your blessing to your word. Amen. Let it not go forth in the eloquence of my speech, for indeed I lack one. But rather let it go forth in the demonstration of the power and of your spirit so that the faith of these men and women would lie in your word and on the words of any man. Grant, O oh God, grace for me to do no violence to your word. And I ask for ability to be able to break down the word of God into such small particles that everyone will understand and be able to assimilate. Grant that beyond being here as O oh God, these ones will be doers. For it is in the doing of your word that the prophet shall appear. Sweet Holy Spirit of God, you are the greatest teacher. 
you are my senior partner in the ministry you are my teacher you are my leader you are the one who enables me my enabler I yield to you even my speech center even my brain and every part of me this morning please take it break it down remold it specifically for this morning service in the name of Jesus when you've done all that you would do oh God let all of your glory remain with you and let all eyes see it let the blessings rest upon the people it's with thanksgiving that we ask not wavering in the name of Jesus and the church said and the church said God bless you. Before you sit and say to anybody, say the Father's blessing. Father's say it one more time. Father's Take your seat. God bless you. You have such a lovely choir. I just bless God. I bless God for your ministry. I bless God for your ministry. Pastor Yomi and Pastor Yinko, thank you so much for being so supportive of Pastor. And thanks for being my friend and for blessing me from time to time. God bless you. So I appreciate you. We're going to be speaking on the subject of the Father's blessing. This is supposed to be a 10-part series. So it's not going to be possible for me to do it in a Sunday. So by God's special grace, I'm coming back in January. And I'm hoping we can block out three days. And I'm going to say to you, if you don't, if God does not speak to you, clearly today. Don't bother to attend the remaining three sessions, whatever number of sessions you're going to have, okay? Don't come. But if you come for all these sessions, one thing I want to promise you is this. I'm going to be able to give you, uh, so a seed into your life of the MP3 which has a 10 weeks message on it, this series. Because we can't do the 10 series even if you have, except you have 10 days. So I would drop at the end of the last session, uh, sometime in January as pastor and I will agree uh, the seed, the, the MP3 and if you truly attend all of the sessions you would certainly have one of it on the house Pastor Femi and I would pay for that, amen, amen. praise the name of Jesus <clears throat> now talking of the father's blessings and I know that people well, I have to be disciplined now my time starts to run now, amen <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Each time we hear the word blessing, our first inclination is to assume it's just all about money, material, and financial blessings. And it's part of it. But that's not all of it. There's a lot more to it when God is concerned when we talk of blessings. And the Father there is referring to God. Are you still in the house? I love people to talk back to me. I'm not like your pastor. You know, we're just different. Our first name happens to be the same, but we're different. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So, when you heard that subject, Father's blessing, oh yes, I'm excited. You should be, and I am excited. But I want you to know that God means a lot more than just financial and material blessings by what is put together for us to do beginning from this day. Amen? Amen? Blessings of God are good. We know that. We all love it. But let me first define to you what God means when he says, when he speaks to you and I about blessing. Blessings of God, as far as is concerned, goes beyond money or material blessings. The best and I believe the most apt definition of the word blessing, as far as God is concerned, will be found in the book of Psalms chapter 1 and verse number 1. Psalms 1 verse 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of discomfort. That is the King James or the New King James. But then if you want to get the real meaning, if you come with me to uh, uh, the Amplified Version of the same verse, Amplified Version, Genesis uh, Psalm 1 verse 1, it says, blessed. And typical of the Amplified, it then says, dash hyphen and it says happy fortunate prosperous and enviable is the man if you are blessed of God those four things must be present together not two not three 
I hope you know that you could have money, you could have all of the material gains, and you may not be happy. Are you still in the house? Good. So God says, the man who is blessed of me must be happy, must be prosperous, must be fortunate, and he must be an envy to those around him. In other words, people know everything about you and they want to be like you. I always say to people that you can buy water bed, you can buy all of these latest beds that they will say to you before you land on it, you are, you are, you are gone. But it's not true. Money can buy you the best of bed, it can't buy you sleep. Are you still in church? <laughs> but some people have money, they can ride all the best of cars, but when you know what they're going through, you don't want to envy them. But God wants me to tell you this morning that by the time he finishes with you and I, all of those four elements in that definition will be present in your life. Amen. Can you say louder, amen? amen? So the blessings of God encompasses material gains, but it goes beyond that. It talks, it speaks of health, it speaks of wealth, it speaks of peace, it speaks of everybody around you just your children are doing well. That is the true blessings of God. That is the message God has brought or sent me to bring across the path this day. And I'm trusting God by the end of these meetings, oh God, you will realize that God is true to his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me try to explain to you in a very brief nutshell, if I may, by giving you three, what I call three profound statement as introduction of this subject. Number one is that God wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. This is not to psych you up. I am talking of fact. You know how they said people that when, when people pray, you can say amen. When you're making a statement of fact, your amen doesn't change anything. Whether you said it or you didn't say it. I want you to know that God wants you blessed. <clears throat> and he's done all that he needs to do to bless you. Are you still here? So in Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3, the Bible says, Ephesians 1 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So God had already blessed you. He didn't say, I might consider blessing you depending on what you did or you don't do. He says, I've already blessed you. So that matter is settled. Now, I do appreciate that some of, some of us may not be walking in the fullness, as Paul puts it, of God's blessings. Then the problem has to be with you and not with God. And we're going to get to it as we go on. Maybe not today in totality, but we'll get there at some point in time during this series. Can I hear you say amen again? So that's number one statement I wanted to say. That God has, or God wanted to bless you. He's done all that he needs to do to bless you. Number two, when God created you and I, his intention was that you would live by his blessings. Not by any other thing. It's just the blessings of God that he wants you to live by. Let me even try to define what blessing is in the layman's language, in the, in the in a contemporary language that you and I can relate to, not the biblical language. Blessings is just having all of God's resources at your disposal. <laughs> that's, that's what blessing is. When you say man is blessed, it simply means that he may not have a billion naira or million naira in his pocket, but when he needs that money, it surfaces. Are you still here? When he has a need, God gets up and meets it. That is blessing. Blessing is not stacking 10 billion naira in your account and we have children who have need and you can't even meet it. That's not blessing. You're going to hear more of that if I have time this morning. True blessing is what this church is blessed. I was saying, my wife and I were talking when the children came. I think I've been in a meeting. I was called to minister. I think they were there. I was called to minister and to raise funds for them at the mission center. And I was saying to my wife, yes, I've given the cash, but I also promised the center of them run a Montessori school. So I pledged, amongst other things, that we will equip the Montessori school, which is what my wife does, uh, from Europe for that. I'm not sure whether this is a group or the same group. I think it's I think they must be. 
So it seemed to my wife that they needed to visit the school because they need to take measurement before they can buy the equipment. And I said, that is true blessing. When God blessed Abraham, Abraham, not Abraham, God said, Genesis 12, verse 2, I'm coming back to it on another context. He says, and I will make thy name great, and I will bless you, and I will make you a blessing. And so until you become a blessing, you're not blessed. And that's what this assembly is doing. I say you are blessed in this church. Yeah. Number three point I wanted to make about God concerning this subject is that when you walk in the scriptures, in fulfillment of scriptures, the demon, the principality that will stand on your way to the blessings of God upon your life has not been created. Are you still here? Are you still here? So very quickly, let me run you through scriptures. Try to come as fast as you can if you want to write. If you can't, take the CD because time is not on our side this morning. In Genesis chapter number one, I want to establish that God designed your life to be built around blessing. Nothing else. Genesis chapter one, verse 28, the first statement or commandment of God to man the Bible said, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fowls of the, of the air, over the birds, over the uh, uh, animals that creep on the face, and over everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. God said, he blessed them. Point to Pastor and say, Pastor Femi, God bless you. In Genesis chapter number 5, verse number 2, Genesis 5, verse number 2, the Bible says, Male and female created he them and blessed them in the day that they were created and he called their name Adam. Again, you see God talking of blessing to the people that he's created. Genesis chapter number 12, verses 1, 2, 3. God said unto Abraham, Abraham, get thee out of your country from your kindred of him, my father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, verse, verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thee a blessing. Verse 3 says, I will bless them that blesses thee, I will curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be what? Yes. This is God's plan for you. This is God's plan for me. God wants people to see you and call you Blessed. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter number, I believe chapter number 22, uh, uh, when God spoke to Abraham to go, to go and sacrifice his son, first son, only son Isaac, and he obeyed. From verse 15 of Genesis 22 to verse 18, the Bible said, Genesis 22, 15 to 18, and the angel of the Lord called out of heaven the second time, saying, because thou, he said, by myself have I sworn, verse 16, because thou hast not withheld a son, thy only son, therefore, in blessing, I will, God is talking about me this morning, in blessing, I will bless you, in multiplying, I will multiply you, I will cause your seed to be as the stars of heaven, and as the sand by the, by the seashore, and thy seed shall speak to the enemies, at the gate. The kind of blessing God has in store for us, believe me, is what I call transgenerational blessing. Amen. Many of you, Pastor Femi and I, we, 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 we talk about this a lot. You see God do some things in the life of those who are associated with you, your children, biological, spiritual, and you wonder. They probably wouldn't understand what they're enjoying. It's probably because of the work that your father and your mother had done. Hallelujah. God said, I will bless you and your seed after you. You know, you know that's a blessing that is short-lived. That's a blessing that will outlive you. Amen. When we were growing up many years ago, we used to hear of some families in Lagos. Rich, rich families. Darucha, for instance. Some of you must have heard or read about that. I'm not sure if you have heard of that name before. Very few today. 
when those days was about probably the richest. Several other people like him before. But don't get to hear that name no more. Are you still here? But even at old age, God was blessing Abraham. Genesis 24, verse 1. The Bible says, Now Abraham was old and well stricken in years, but the Lord hath blessed him. I imagine he wasn't working no more at that age, and the Bible says he was still blessed. You know, the kind of blessings that when God blesses you, you try to be humble, but it's, not, it's just not possible. People around you just can't handle it. Genesis chapter number 24, verse 34, 35. Verse 34, this is what happened. The Bible said, the, the servant of Abraham had gone looking for a wife, for Isaac. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. Verse 35, for the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. He's had He's had herds of sheep, of cattle. He's got men servants. He's got maid servants. He's got silver. He's got gold. Now, I then went back and did the research. Genesis 24 from verse number 1. That was when he called the servant to go and look for a wife for his son Isaac. He didn't tell him to include in his CV that he was rich. But that guy saw something. He couldn't keep quiet. Oh my God. I said he couldn't keep quiet. People will see you, no matter how you try to hide it, you will not be able to hide the glory of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Genesis still, I believe chapter 26, and I love that particular scripture. Genesis 26 verse number 1. The Bible says, now there was a famine in the land, apart from the famine in the days of Abraham. Oh my God. When there is famine, whatever you put to the ground, the natural consequence is that you should die. Because there has been no water, no rain, nothing. Nothing should thrive where there was famine. But verse number 12 of that, Genesis 26, the Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. I love the word that in that context. He was referring to the land that was supposed to be barren. And he reaped the same year rain hadn't fallen weather hadn't changed but the God of weather had done something because of one man he received a hundredfold that same year I love verse number 13 and the man waxed great and he went forward and he grew until he became the next verse says and the Philistines envied him. You have no idea what kind of blessings that God will put on your life. That people will see you and say, ah, they will look at you, look at your spouse, look at your children, look at what you do and they say, ah, ah, God is partial. You're going to understand something. People say God doesn't have favorite children. It's, that's not scriptural. I do know, and I will show it to you this morning, that God has favorite children. By the way, one is standing before you. <laughs> oh my God. Listen to this, brethren. God wants to single you out as an example. He wants to showcase you. That's why he's put this meeting together this weekend. Hallelujah. Now, Isaac, the son of Abraham. Abraham had gone. Now God has blessed Isaac. And God said, did it in such a way that he says, I'm the God of Abraham. He then added Isaac. And then Isaac was supposed to leave the scene. Then Jacob came. And the blessing was still being transferred on an ever-increasing basis to the descendant as he swore. Genesis 32. From verse 24. Genesis 32 from verse 24 to 27. The Bible says, Then was Jacob left alone. And there he wrestled with a man all night. Verse 35. 25. The Bible says, And when the day was about to break, the man said unto him, Let me go, for the day breaketh. 
He said, I will not let you go except you bless me. You took the whole of his joints, caused it to be in disorder. He said, I don't care. I could be limping. I'm not even able to walk unless you bless me. You ain't going nowhere. So God looks at me and said, what is your name? If you have time, we're going to deal with that in the future. Because the blessings of God has a lot to do with name. So he said, my name is Jacob. God said, if you do, if you do any of the uh, 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 story Bibles, if you look at what's your name and say Jacob, you'll see a small note on top of it, and it will say to you, supplanter, in the side note. So Jacob means supplanter, or in today's language, 419. So when he says, bless me, unless you bless me, I'm not going to go. He says, what's your name? Because he knew his name. He said, my name is supplanter. When the blessings of God, if he ever does, rest upon a 419 man, he cannot anneal. No, that's a legal term. It won't stay. So God said, I'm not going to waste my resources. What's your name? He said, you're not going to be Jacob anymore. I'm going to change your name. Somebody's name is about to be changed. I said, somebody's name is about to be changed. In the name of Jesus. I think it's in verse 26 or 27. The Bible says, God said, and I will bless you as I have promised your father. He said, for the sake of Abraham's, my servant. Deuteronomy chapter number, chapter number 15, verse number 6. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6. He says, and the Lord your God blessed thee as he has promised you. He said, and you shall lend unto nations and you shall not borrow. You shall rule over nations and they shall not rule over you. Psalm, Psalm 5, verse number 12, the last verse. Psalm 5, 12. The Bible says, talk of the righteous man. It says, with favor will he compass him round about. He will bless the righteous and encompass him about as with a shield. God is about to garnish somebody's life Amen. with favor and blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. This, this, David says, I think in Psalm 35, verse 27, he says this, the, the big part. He said, let the Lord be magnified who taketh pleasure in the prosperity of of his servant. God wants you to prosper. But one thing that many people do not know about the blessings of God is that the blessings only rest upon the firstborn. Now, who don't know what to make of that statement? Some wanted to clap. They look at their birth position. They stop clapping. They say, let me first weigh this thing before I go forward. Let me repeat myself, just so you don't misunderstand me. All of those scriptures, and there are a lot more, but I'm under pressure of time. God demonstrated clearly that he has purposed and he's done what he needs to do for you and I to prosper. But what we don't know, many of us, maybe some of us, maybe many of us, up until this time, is that those promises are meant for firstborns. Okay, can we stop here so we can come back? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Now. Let me ask you a few questions. Help me here, help me here. If you are the first, biologically, in your family, can I see your hand? Oh my God, there's so many firstborn here. Good. If you were somewhere in the middle, between the first and the last, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, you are more, okay. If you were the last, Pastor Fem, which one you did? Hallelujah. I think there is a clear misunderstanding of the ways God works. Many of us, we don't take time to study God through his word. Okay? The blessings of God will only rest upon the firstborn. I'm the last in my family. I hope you know that. And my wife is the last. It's not, she's not the last. She has, uh, she's somewhere in the middle. Can I explain to you that the ways of God are not our ways? Isaiah chapter 55, 7 and 8. Isaiah 55, 7 and 8. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. 
God's definition of firstborn is not necessarily biological. So some people have hope here. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. Don't take part of my time. If you did, I'm going to extend my time. So I expect that you will, you will, you will respond. I like that, but make it as brief as you can. So it is possible for you to be biologically the first and God will still make you first. It is possible for you to be second or third of about eight children and God will catapult you to the front. It is possible even for you to be the last and God will make you the first. So let's go through scriptures very quickly and I will close at that point in time and I can come back when you want me to come back. Amen. So let's look at the way God works and his own definition of firstborn so that some of us can have hope regardless of our position of birth. Amen. Who was the first man? Let's make this a bit more interactive. Who was the first man that God created? The first being? Everybody say Adam. Okay, so the Bible calls him the first man Adam. Is that correct? So there was a second or last man Adam. Was that one? And who was that? Okay now, so in reality, who was the first Adam? Jesus. Okay, are you getting something now? <laughs> Very quickly, Adam had two children, two boys to start with. What are their names? Cain and Abel, not Abraham, Adam. Now, Cain and Abel, Genesis chapter number four. Verse number one. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she bare him a son, and they called his name Cain, for he said, I have received a man from the Lord. Verse two, And she bare again his brother, and called his name Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of ground. Who was born, who was born first? Who was God's firstborn? Oh my God. Somebody has hope. Are you still in church? Are you still in church? Then we had Abraham. All right, then as was then known, we had Abraham. It was then known as Abraham before God called his name Abraham. He also had to start with two sons. Which was the first one? Ishmael. Now, let me, some of you may not know where that was recorded. Genesis 16, the last two verses verses 15 and 16. Genesis 16, verse 15 and 16. The Bible said, and Abraham, or Abraham had a son through Hagar, and the name of the son was called Ishmael. The last verse says, and it was four years, four scores years and six, that's 86 years, when he had uh, uh, Ishmael, which was born to him by Hagar. Every inch of the way in those two verses, God was qualifying by whom he had the child. It was, not, it was not for the sake of filling the pages. Are you here? So how old was he was when he had Ishmael? 86. Jump with me because of time. Genesis 21 verses 1 and 2. And the Lord, Genesis 21, 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. And she conceived and bare a son, and they called his name what? Okay, so who came first? Good. Ishmael came first. But when God, let me ask you, to God, who was the firstborn? As a matter of fact, God is a dangerous God. He didn't even reckon with him as a son. Because in Genesis 22, verse number 1, the Bible said, God said unto Abraham, now the Lord did tempt Abraham, and he said unto me, Abraham, and he said, here my Lord, and he said, verse number two, take now thy son, thy Which meant that as God was concerned, Ishmael was not even a son. Said to your neighbor, if you came second, you have hope. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Then we have the 
two sons who were called Esau and who? And Jacob. Everybody say Esau, Esau. and Jacob. Who was born first? Who did God make first? Ah, this God must be a dangerous God. I have hope. I say I have hope. Esau was born first. As I'm going to hear in the subsequent teachings on this series, why would God, I mean, a, a, a guy who, a nice guy, nice guy, at this exteriorly, his father looked at him and said, Go on, I'm about to die. Go and make me food. Venison, the way and such as I like it. So he, he was in his father's good books. I don't know whether you see what I mean. I mean, Jacob didn't qualify as far as you and I are concerned at the human standard. Because he was a supplanter. Indeed, his brother said to him, you are truly called a supplanter. These two times have you supplanted me. You took my birthright and again you've taken my blessings. But listen to what God said. Malachi chapter 1 verses 2, 2b two and 3. He says this. He said, Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. <laughs> Excuse me. Any human watching from outside will say, what kind of God is this? We're going to get to the, why the one who was born last, who was, if you like, fraudulent, was preferred of God. And God made him the firstborn. God will make someone the firstborn here. Yeah. I said God will make someone the firstborn here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Joseph and Reuben. The Joseph with the coat of many colors. Whom the father loved. Genesis 37. Reuben was the firstborn of that family. How many of you know that? How many children did he have? Twelve. What position was Joseph? Eleventh. Now this is, this is quite interesting because we've been talking of people who were born second who became first. This is the second to the last. <laughs> but you and I know the story. Who was God's firstborn? From number eleven, he became first. Somebody has hope here. I said somebody has hope. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But let me now show you something that will probably beat your imagination. Because of time, I, I'm rushing through this. Can I have... Pastor Kofi, okay, no, don't let me use... Can I use you, sir? Because of your height and the... the white issue. Come and sit down here, sir. Uh, I'm, I know, I hope I'm not breaching your protocol. As in... Don't worry, the angels of the Lord encompass Psalm 34, verse number 7 and 8 is here, don't worry, okay? I need two young men. Two young men, very quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in the heart. Then I need someone who's in between. Doesn't matter your age. Stay there, sir. Yes, sir. Just stay in front of face. Now this is your, no, no, no. Face your face of father. You are Joseph. Is Jacob or Israel as his name changed? These are the two sons of Joseph. His father, Jacob, is old and is about to die. You will not die young. Amen. <laughs> so he heard that his father was about to die and he brought the grandchildren so that because it was typical for parents to bless the children before they passed on. So he had brought the two sons to be blessed of his father Jacob or his trial. So, but he knew the law. So watch me. Call with me to Genesis chapter number 48. The chapter before the one we read. Are you still getting something here? Is anybody encouraged here? Genesis 48. Can, can I have a microphone for one of them please? All of you out here, God will showcase you. It will use us as an example. People will say, ah, have you seen that, bro? If you know what God is doing. And nobody will want to be like you. Amen. For standing out here. Hold it for them. What's, hold it for them, sir. Ah, these are big people this morning. <laughs> Genesis 48, verse 1. And it came to pass. Are you there with me? Because you need to follow this. I need to read it to you for you to follow. 
uh, closely. It came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Joseph is the one facing the altar. Okay? Behold, thy father is sick. You would deal in health in Jesus' mighty name, sir. Amen. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Now, very quickly, who, I'm sure you know, who, is the, who was the firstborn? Okay, who's the second one? Now, let me first say something that would be to imagination. Did you notice that the verse 1 places the names in the order of birth? But beyond verse 1, all through the entirety of scriptures, I did my research. You can't find Manasseh coming first. Even in the mention of the names in the Bible. From this point, after this point, they mentioned Ephraim first. Come with me. And so they said, and one told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee, and he tries strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Okay, let's keep, let's keep that because of time. Jump to verse 8. Excuse me. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? He said, Who are these boys? And Joseph said unto the father, They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will do what? We are talking of blessing. Our father's blessing. Now the eyes, now this is very important. Can you do, can you underline it if you're using the manual Bible? Or highlight it, verse number 10. Very important to what we're discussing this morning. Now the eyes of Israel, that is him sitting and facing you, were dim for age so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him and he kissed, and he kissed him and embraced him. Now that's Joseph because his father was now blind. Did you read that? You have to hold that in your left hand so you don't eat pandadam with it, Okay. And Israel said unto Joseph, verse 11, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees. Joseph, get ready for me now. And he bowed himself, bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both. Now hold both guys. Hold both of them. Your two sons. Okay? I hope you know that when you, when you get to salary, you have to go and see Pop Seal. Hallelujah. Are you there? Okay, so he held them both. Ephraim in his right hand. So who is Ephraim? Put up your hand. Put up. Can you see that? Okay, that is in Joseph's right hand. And then, and Manasseh. Did you see the order in which the names were presented? It has changed already, automatically. And Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand. Both of you kneel down. Okay. Don't forget that the man was old and his eyesight had done, so to speak. This man is even very young. He doesn't even wear glasses. <laughs> and he blessed and Israel strengthened. Okay, now, get ready, sir. Uh, Papa Israel. <laughs> You're going to do me a favor and cross the hands like this. I'm going to read. Okay, what I read. Verse number 13. And Joseph took them both we said that verse 14, sorry. And Israel stretched out his right hand, your right hand, sir, and laid it upon Ephraim's head. No, no, on your, that's right. And who was what? Who was what? The younger. And his left hand towards Israel's right hand. Come, please do that, sir. Wonderful. And, and brought them near to him. And Israel, the grandpa, stretched out his right hand and put it upon his head and then and he blessed Joseph, verse 15, and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, and God, which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel, which redeemed me from all evil, bless the Lord. Let, the name, let my name be named among them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of, the, of all the earth. And when, now listen to this, and when Joseph saw, get ready, sir, when Joseph saw that his blind father, I'm the one adding that to, you, to help you, laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, he displaced him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head onto Manasseh's head. Try to do that. Don't resist him. Stand fast in the faith. Resist him. No, he won't allow. Okay? So stop, stop. Don't fight with the father.
this, listen to this. Verse 18. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. Look at verse number 19, which is also either highlight or that you should underline the case, depending on what kind of Bible you carry. And his father refused. This is the blind man. He refused. And he said, I know it, my son. Again, he says, I know it. He also shall become a people. And he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So he thought the father was blind. So he didn't recognize the first one. God said, my system is different. This man may be blind, but spiritually he was sharp in his eyesight. So he moved his right hand and said, this is the first. You born this one first. Pardon my English this morning, but this is one I anoint as firstborn. Clap for them as they go back. Hallelujah. But the one that is going to beat you most, as I conclude that part of it, is this. Jay say the Bethlehemite had seven sons. God had appeared unto Samuel, the king, sorry, the priest, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 1, while he was still interceding for Saul. God said, to, to, the, to, to Samuel, how long would you mourn over Saul, seeing that I have rejected him to be king over Israel? Anoint or fill thy horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king amongst his sons. So Samuel went to the home of Jesse. We're going to skip because of time in verse 6. When they saw him, the elders, they panicked. Have you come peaceably? He said, peaceably have I come. I've, I think that's verse 5 actually. I've come to offer sacrifice unto the Lord. Verse 6, he sanctified, the, he sanctified Jesse. That's another, we're going to get into that. Why did he have to sanctify Jesse and all his sons? Why? Because he couldn't proceed until, until they were sanctified. Because he wasn't living right. I can't talk to you about that this morning. Then verse number 7. As, Eli, as Eliab, who was the firstborn by birth, passed through or in front of Samuel the prophet, he said, Behold, the Lord's anointed is before me. Immediately, God spoke unto Samuel and said, He said, Look not on his countenance, neither on the height of his stature. For man does not see or look as man looketh. For man looketh on the outward, but God looketh on the outside. He said, I have rejected these. There were seven sons. It was only the firstborn that God said, I had rejected. Every other person after him, he said, I have not chosen this. That's the difference. So if you jump to verse, seven, verse 8 and 9, then the next one, Abinadab came forward. God said, for the Lord had not chosen this. The first one, he said, I have rejected this. Then came Shama, the third one. God said, neither has the Lord chosen this. That's the difference between rejection and not chosen because God can choose, choose him later in the future. But when he has rejected him, his case was sealed. Verse number 11. God then says to Samuel, are these all the children? I got good news for someone here this morning. The father said, Oh no, by the way, there, there is one little rascal. He is not good for nothing except to keep sheep in the desert. You shouldn't be seen publicly. I'm here to announce to someone that whether your pastor, whether your father has written you off, God is bringing you to the forefront. 
Did you notice that his pastor didn't think much of him, sir? Neither his father. Because the instructions were clear. Bring all thy sons. He brought six. He didn't bring the seven one. If you have been rejected, God is moving on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. And I love the next sentence of Samuel. He said, for we will not sit down. Your enemy will have no rest until you attain God's plan for your purpose. Hallelujah. So then there comes this young man. His name was David. Everybody said David. He came. I can imagine the elders, their legs are already shaking because they've been standing up. Why they went to fetch him from the, from the farm. And when he came, did you notice that as soon as Samuel sighted David, God said, here is he. Anoint him. He didn't say sanctify him. Which meant that even though he was living at the back of desert, where no eyes could pick up what he was doing, he was living a sanctified life. No wonder he became the firstborn. He said, here is he, anoint him. So number seven became number one. Number two became number one. Number 11 became number one. What is it that God is doing? Everybody stand up and take your Bible and turn into Psalm 89. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are there, wake me up. Psalm 89. Because it takes time, so I may sleep off. For you to get there. If you are there, say amen. In Psalm 89 verse 27, let's read it together. Psalm 89 verse 27, we want to go. Stop reading. Also, I will make him my firstborn above all the kings of the earth. I want to submit to you this morning. The firstborn are not born. They are made. The God who made Jacob first, the God who made David first, is about to make you first. In the name of Jesus. You can sit down if you want to as I begin to round up. Do you understand? Let me, say, let, me, let me share something with you. I come from a family. My mother has three children. As you know, she's still very much alive at 102. Young woman. All of us were boys. We were boys. My eldest brother is a professor. He's 73 years this year. 72, 73 this year. And he retired as a professor of economics and universities are keen enough to sign him. He's retired about eight years ago at 65, but they're still signing him to teach. He is blessed. Are you still here? The brother that I come in after is not so fine with all due respect. But then, I am the last one by God's special grace. By God's special grace in that family, God made me first. Okay, what's the problem? What's the problem? You're not rejoicing with me for telling you the fact. If I could pull up, if I could pull up, if I could pull up my uh, messages. My brother in the middle sent me a text about three months ago. He sent it in Yoruba. For those of you, I will try to interpret it as best I can. But in Yoruba, he says, Iwola Shaju. I hope you know what that means. So those of us who are behind you, we are too much in a hurry to come. I don't know that in Yoruba land, when they say Taye and Kende, the one who came first is actually Taiwo. But the one who came second is actually the firstborn. You know why? Because the reason they call him Kende and he's still the first is because when they were both struggling in the womb to come, and if they kept on struggling, they would kill the mother. So Ken, they said, there's no need to struggle. You go. And so the parents recognized that he may have come last, but he's the first. Are you still here? If there's any important meeting in my house by God's special grace today, 
unless I approve the date, it's not holding. And I don't even dictate it. They said to me, get a date from Femi first. When it does. It's not about money. I hope you understand that. My, bro my eldest brother isn't poor by any standard. Accomplished man in his own right. But it pleases God. He doesn't even call me Femi anymore. He, don't, he used to call me Babaini, but now he calls me pastor. And he respects that and not upon my life. Are you still in the house? One of the daughters that got to get married. He sent me a text yesterday. and said, X, Y, Z, this is my eldest brother. He said, they, they're thinking of getting married. I've told them to clear the date with you because you have to give us the date in this family. I have the text here. I'm talking this weekend. So it is, I'm not just talking of scripture. I know very many people who are born last or born in the middle, but by God's special grace, they are first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God isn't partial. Jesus, you know, 1 Corinthians 15 45. 1 Corinthians 15 45. The Bible says, as it was written, the first man, Adam, was a soul giving life, and the second or the last man, Adam, was a life giving or spirit quickening man. So Jesus was last in order of birth, but the Bible calls him the first Adam. I want you to know that God has plans for your life and is set to make you the first. The problem is, he has told us that there's a process. He calls it making. He said, I, will, I made him. So there is a process of making. There is a process. The process will take us another nine weeks by God's special grace. But one thing I'm going to say to you before I sit down this morning is that God is not just interested in you being born again. If that's all you do and you don't do anything further, God is not interested in you. I hope you know that when you're born again, you got a passport to heaven. But believe me, like many nations of the world, out of the ECOWAS, and I'm sure you know heaven is out of ECOWAS, you will require a visa. I hope you understand that. And the truth is, your visa will mean the conformity with the image of his dear son. Romans chapter 8 and verse 29, we're going to start from there next time. Romans 8, 29, Bible says, For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son, being the firstborn among many brethren. So there is a conforming process. And if you and I don't go through that, believe me, we are going nowhere with God. You should seek to get, not the blessing, but strive to become the firstborn of God. So God can say, this is my beloved son. Jesus was coming out of the baptism water. Matthew 3, 16, 17, the last two verses. And the Bible says, and lo, as, as of being baptized, and he came out of, the, out of the water, behold, the heavens were opened unto him. Not to everybody, because other people were being baptized at the same time. And the Spirit of God, is, and he saw the Spirit, he alone saw it. So the spirit descended upon him like a dove and a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. One time John says, this is my favorite son. I told you God has a favorite son. Believe me, every other people, they were being baptized. But only upon him was heavens open. If you don't believe that, read the uh, Luke's version. Luke 3, 22 to 23. Other people were there. I imagine some ladies who have just gone from the salon coming for the baptismal service and say, oh, pastor, don't let my hair touch water. The Bible says he was praying. He was praying. The heavens just opened up. Heavens will open up on somebody's view. So God wants your life and my life to be conformed to the image, not just to be born again. Galatians 4, 19, the Bible says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ is formed in them. The truth is many, there are so many Christians in this country but there is no sign that Christ is on the inside not even to talk of being born or being formed. And so if you must become God's firstborn, believe me, you have to go through process. One of the things that God says is obedience. Proverbs 3 9. Proverbs 3 9. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase, so shall
Thy bands be filled with plenty and then and the wine presses will burst forth. How many of you remember that I've come here to preach on first fruit? How many of you did it at that time? Good, wonderful. Sorry, how many of you? Eight of you. Good. How many of you are still doing it? You are on the path on the way to becoming or to be made God's first because it's this simple obedience is one of the things that would catapult you to from whatever you are to where you ought to be. You can begin to talk of Isaac. You don't understand that when the, the, the push came to the shop, do you realize that he was obedient even unto death? January is the beginning of another year. The God who has undertaken to take you and I there should be the first in your life. And I know it may be hard, but the first salary you get, as you and I know, for the month of January, if you want to sanctify the remaining 12, belongs to who? Don't do arithmetic with God. Don't bring a calculator. But you know the children are going back to school. You, if you knew the word which you knew before, you ought to make provision before now. It's Christmas time. Don't put your ten fingers in your mouth. Whatever it is that it will take you, begin to demonstrate to God that you are an obedient child. That first fruit you would do. I know some of you meant well, but the pressure of life don't allow you to do it. But let me say this to you. This is a real introduction of this message. If you want to be made God's firstborn, can I invite you in your heart to determine that come January, your first fruit you give to God. What it does is it preserves you for the year, but more than that as well, it also preserves your income and multiply it. Rest of you this morning, God bless you. If you are clapping for Jesus, why don't you do it properly? If you want to be qualified for the Father's blessings, that's not the way to do it. You have to do it with all your heart. God who qualifies the unqualified. God who raises a poor man from the dung hill and sets him among the princes. To him be glory in the church now and forevermore. Will somebody shout amen. Father, we are grateful. You sent forth your word. And you granted illumination to our hearts. That firstborns are not born they are made Father I pray today that whatever allocation man has given to us as we please you by the spirit of obedience giving our first fruit and doing what God said may the Lord take us from where left, life left us and transpose us to where we ought to be may God make us to become the kings of the earth and rulers in the marketplace the head and not the tail to be on top only and never beneath again may his name be glorified in Jesus name amen. what kind of amen is that amen. I am not even feeling you yet I said may the Lord make you the head may the Lord make you the firstborn in the name of Jesus but how could we have this word if he didn't send us a man a man that has experienced the word can we bless God for our own dear pastor Olufemi Atoy BSN oh Grace Assembly you're, you're not making me happy at all
and the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. And whatever the Lord doeth, my brother, it is permanent. And so I speak a prayer on behalf of the brethren to you, my brother, that the hand of the Lord that transposed you from where you were to where you ought to be, he will keep you. He will establish you. You will reign in life. The Lord will answer for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says Abraham was old and was very rich. Continually rich. As you continue to go out in the name of the Lord, fearing no foe, taking every risk in the name of the Lord, the Lord will keep you. You will live as long as you desire. And you will never lack anything. When we hear of you, we'll be thanking God. May your light, your life continue to shine a light of hope to everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for you, my sister, as you help him and support him. As you choose to be behind him, the Lord will grant you your heart's desire. Amen. You'll be first amongst equals. Amen. And concerning your lovely children, eyes have not seen. Ears do not know the kind of generational blessings that will manifest in your lives. Amen. And for everyone that is saying amen, you will tap into this anointing. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Help me celebrate the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Pastor Femi and Pastor Debola. I want to thank you so much for coming. I heard clearly.